Welcome back to the Mott Miller YouTube channel, Home Brewers. Today's video is gonna see Martin and I take the concept of a pressure barrel, which is a piece of equipment that's been available in the home brewing world for many years, and see how we can upgrade that concept using modern ideas, different methods, and new technology. Martin, how did you start home brewing? What were your first steps into the world of creating awesome beer at home? Well, James, think back to 2015. Mark Ronson's in the charts. My wife bought me a home brewing kit. A okay. kit comprised of a plastic bucket, yep. a pressure barrel, and Woodford's Wherry. Okay, that kit that everybody, it's kind of like a rite of passage. You've got to brew the Wherry kit at least yeah. once. Yeah, yeah, on there. I feared it. I, I stuck it in the loft for 18 months because I thought it's all going to go wrong. <laughs> So, but eventually got it out, thought, right, I'm gonna have a crack at this. Made the beer, fermented it, stuck it in the pressure bell. Oh, I couldn't get on with it, man. I just could not get on with that bit of kit. The tap leaked. You know, I couldn't get a seal. I couldn't get pressure into it with the bulbs. So, you know, I tried it twice, slung it, and then I moved on to bottling. Right, okay, yeah. So you started home brewing probably about two years before me, but our journeys sound very similar. Started with kit beers, uh, and I too was bought like a bundle that had, you know, loads of different bits and pieces of equipment in there, fermenting bucket, all that kind of stuff, and a pressure barrel. And I think I did maybe three brews using that. And uh, similar to you, like, don't get me wrong, I know that there are a lot of people that have lots of success with these things, but for me, it was just unreliable. I, did, I was in a position where I was putting all of the gas in when I was using the CO2 um, bulb injector thing, uh, which then meant when I was trying to serve, I was getting beer gushing out. I had leaky taps, leaky seals, people telling me to put Vaseline around the seals, which just doesn't seem like the doesn't right thing to do. But the idea of a vessel that you can serve from at home that's inexpensive and allows you to keep the beer carbonated is something we've kind of always had in the back of our mind. And I know both of us moved on to kegging quite quickly, which is a similar concept but for some maybe not as easily achieved as others. So we've got something that we're really keen to talk about today in this video. Martin, what is it? So James, it's a bundle of products that we've taken from the range that kind of does exactly the same job, but in a much more modern and reliable way. Okay, yeah. So should we get some of that equipment onto the table and start taking everybody at home through our idea? Yeah, let's do that magic bit where it just all appears. Yeah, there you go, Martin. By magic, everything we need is now on the table, all right? Yeah. So shall I start by taking us through what's at the core of this concept? Yeah, go on, because I can recognize a lot of things here. Yeah, let's start over here then, right? Now, this is the Chubby, okay? And it's a pressure fermenter uh, available from Keg King. It's 30 litres in capacity. And what this allows us to do, as well as uh, some of the other um, pressure fermenters that have been recently released by um, Keg King, which we've got an awesome playlist on, which I'll put a link up here for you to check out if you want to. But what this allows us to do is ferment the beer under pressure, which there are some huge benefits of, which we'll, we'll touch on, and serve as well from here. Okay, so we can yep. ferment under pressure, which allows us to naturally carbonate it also limits off flavors. So if, uh, for example, we're brewing like a lager style beer and we haven't got temperature control, well, actually it's less important when you're fermenting under pressure because the pressure inside the vessel keeps those off flavors that might occur from the yeast in check, okay? Then because on the top of this, you have basically like a keg type system with a pressure release valve, and a gas in post and a beer out post, we can serve directly from here, okay? Yeah. And you'll notice on the opposite end of uh, the beer out post, we've got some silicon tube on the inside, uh, which you can see just snaking down. And at the bottom of that silicon tube is a floating ball, which means that when we come to serve beer out of here, we're serving from the top. Okay. Right? So let me just go through that. So we've got basically, the idea of being able to serve under pressure, ferment under pressure, which is an added bonus over the pressure barrel, yeah. and actually serve from the top, so we don't have to worry too much about the serving. So yeah. we're already ahead already in terms of features. Excellent, yeah, you're with me, which is excellent. 
Now, I don't understand why you've got the plastic bucket though. So the plastic bucket is uh, for when we're mixing up our beer kits, okay? So if you're gonna be okay. using this for beer kits, which you know most people that use pressure barrels are brewing beer kits, what we're gonna be able, what we're gonna need to do is mix the liquid malt extract with very hot water yeah. and bring it into dilution. We can't add boiling hot water into one of these, okay? Because it will compromise the plastic. But we can into one of our fermenting buckets. So what we're gonna be able to do is mix the entirety of our beer kit up in here and then transfer it from this vessel into this one. Now there's a benefit to doing that as well, right? Okay. Can you think what it might be? Um, aeration. Yes. So the process of transferring from here into here is gonna allow us to aerate the wort before we add the yeast, which is gonna give the yeast a really good start for its fermentation, all right? Okay. What's the other things in front then? Now, this is where it gets even more interesting, right? So on your pressure barrel, you had the uh, like funny valve adapter thing on the top that you might dump a load of CO2 mm -hmm. into. You might use one of those S S40 valve things. Yeah, the things where you've got no control over the pressure yeah. going in. Um, or the You're literally doing little dashes of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. or you've got the little adapter that pierces one of the 16 gram um, tubes of Dumps it CO2 all in. and puts all of it in, right? Okay. Now we're not doing that, we're gonna have more control. And the way we're gonna get more control is we're still gonna be using the 16 gram CO2 bulbs, but we're gonna be pairing it with one of our malt miller um, mini, regulator. mini regulators, right? Awesome. Now included in the kit is a gray gas post, yep. which is gonna go on the gas post here. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, sorry, gray disconnect, which goes on the gray gas post here. We know it's the gas one because it's got little grooves in it. They simply screw together and create a tight seal, a gas tight seal. Then the CO2 bowl goes into there yeah. and we can adjust the pressure by using the little dial to either increase or decrease the amount of pressure that's in there. Okay, so now that... we're, we're not using these to carbonate the beer. All we're gonna be using these for is topping up the serving pressure so that we can get the beer out. So. You know, you might use one or two of those for the whole thing, but you're not going to be using them to, like I said, carbonate the beer. Because it's going to do that because it's fermenting under pressure. Yes. The CO2 stays in there while it's fermenting, gets reabsorbed into the beer, and we end up with fizzy beer that's naturally carbonated using the CO2 produced by the yeast during fermentation. We do want to control the amount of CO2 that is building up in here, right? The chubby is pressure rated to 32 psi. Yeah. Um, it's got a pressure release valve on it, which is a safety mechanism. So if it gets too high, that's just going to pop and let excess pressure out. But we want to be a bit more refined than that. Um, and actually, until quite recently, being more refined meant actually spending quite a bit of money. It's not the case now. We're going to use something called a spundy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, spundy, you know what spunding valve is? Yeah, so you can control the pressure that's coming out or staying in the vessel. Yes, so this does exactly the same job, but it's super cheap and it fits, again, on the gas post. So yeah. once we've add, uh, mixed our wort up and we've added our yeast, we seal the fermenter, we put the spundy on, we leave it for 24, 48 hours to let the pressure build up. And then on the back, we've got a little adjustable dial which again will let us dial in the amount of pressure that's sat in here. So we'd be able to adjust that according to beer style. Yep. So like for um, an English ale, and we want to have some esters, we could set it a little bit lower. Yeah, and where you don't want necessarily as high carbonation, you want that yeah. sort of cask type thing. Yeah, or if we're doing a lager, we can set it around about 12, 14 and prevent the sulfur. Yeah, really prevent any off flavors being generated by the yeast. And by doing that, get a beer that is going to be, sorry, a lager that's going to be far higher carbonation at the end. So James, you talked about the regulator and the bulb was being used to push the beer out when we're pouring it. Yep. What are we pouring it out with? Well, again, we've included some equipment that's going to help with that and turn this fermenter into a serving vessel. So we've got, to start with, a little bit of beer line. Then we've got a few other little accessories. We've got some John Guest fittings that we're going to use in conjunction with the beer line, okay? And then we've got a black beer disconnect. Yep. So we saw the grey one for gas, the black one is for beer. Yep. Okay? And then we have a uh, torpedo party tap. One stainless of our steel ones. Nice stainless nice. steel ones, right? Yeah. And this all fits together super easy. 
the John Guest fitting just screws onto the tap. The yes. other one screws, yeah, onto the disconnect. Yeah. And then your line goes in between. Yeah, we've got our beer line. One goes in one end, and the other goes in the other. When it goes, when we're ready, we just squeeze the tap, and because we've got pressure in there, we're gonna uh, end up with beer coming through the line, out of the tap, into our glass. So you talked about making up the beer kits in the bucket. Yep. So I guess all there really we need to do, show how easy it is to make that beer kit and get it into the method. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on to the show and tell part. So James, before we start making a kit, we've got to choose which kit we're going to do. Uh, I thought the best ones to do after the way you described it was going to serve the beer was the new festival limited edition range. Right, okay, yes, I've seen these. I'm really keen to try them out, but what's the premise of them? Why are they limited edition? What's new about them? Pub classics, mate, they're aimed at pub classics. You know, those favorite beers that everyone loves. You've got like Spitfire, Britfire. Okay. You've got Friars, which is Abbott's. You've got Wright's Golden, which is Rain Wright's. Yeah. And then you've got Brigadier, right? Which is Bombardier, perhaps? Yeah. yeah. You got it, mate, you yeah. got it. So these are based on beers that we're gonna know, know and love if we're into our like car scale, right? Yeah. You know, you may go to the pub, enjoy it with or without a sparkler, personal preference. Um, but yes, that sounds like a great idea. And as we did mention, you can serve really nice kind of cask style carbonation by using the natural way of getting the CO2 dissolved into the beer during fermentation. So now all that's left to do is choose which one of these we fancy doing. Well, Martin, as you have selected these, I think you should choose which one we're gonna brew. What we're gonna do? Right, it's golden. So James, let's quickly run through what you get in your kit. Cause basically this kit, the other thing I can say is apart from that fantastic beer styles, Everything's included. First of all, liquid malt extract in a pouch. Okay. Nice and easy to squeeze out. And how much have we got? Three kilos, yeah? Three kilos in there, James. Awesome. Right, you'll also spot there's a little bag of hops. Yeah. Which go in around about day five. Yeah. You've also got your packet of yeast, sugar. Now the sugar is if you were to bottle it. Okay, so this is our, our bottling sugar to add the extra fermentables when you're adding yeah, it to yeah. a bottle to bottle condition, right? Exactly. I guess if you really wanted to make use of that, and you wanted to add additional carbonation to your beer um, in the chubby, you could put it into the chubby at the end of fermentation. Yeah, or you could drop it in when you drop the hops in, because yep. you're obviously going to take the gas pressure off, so you can, again, you can get more natural carbonation. So James, let's just get on with the process and show how easy it is to make this with the kit we've assembled and get it into the chubby. So we're going to start brewing this beer kit now, Martin, aren't we? And as we've explained, the first part is we're going to mix the wort, mix the malt extract up in our first bucket so we can then decant it into the chubby, yeah? Before that though, clean your equipment. Yep. Sanitize it. Yes, so this has all been cleaned. Uh, we need to sanitize it. So we've got a jug of no rinse sanitizer. Yep, got no rinse. And we've got a, a brewing spoon there as well that spoon. we're gonna be mixing it up with. So you can chuck the spoon in as well. Check your taps off. Yep, check your tap is turned that off. too many off times. In it goes. Okay, nice yep. and firmly on. And you're gonna do the uh, fermenter bucket shuffle, right? Spread it around. Gonna run a little bit out the tap. Okay, and I'm gonna crack the lid. And the joy of this no rinse sanitizer is that you, you don't have to rinse it. It can, you know, all the residue can stay in there. It's not a problem at all. Fill a bit on the table. Yeah. Sanitize the table. Always good to have a clean, sanitized table. Look at that. It's increased in volume. There we go. Now, one other thing we need to make sure for the part when we're decanting is that our tap, whilst it's turned off, is also facing the right way because we don't want to be in a position where we've got side pouring tap. Um, make sure that the nut's done up nicely. And then the first thing we need to do is add, I've got about four liters here of very hot water, yep. okay? Now you can use a kettle for this um, and just use a couple of kettles full of boiling water. Add that into the fermenter. Now a little word on brewing water, okay? Um, now water comprises 96% of the beer you're gonna be drinking, 95%. So whatever you do to enhance your water does make a difference. Now that could be using bottled water, 
it could be using water that you've treated. Um, but as a bare minimum, if you're gonna use tap water, we thoroughly recommend using sodium metabisulfite or Campden tablets um, to remove the chlorine from your water. So one really simple step that makes a massive difference. And we've done it with all the water we're gonna be using today. So Mark, we've got the liquid malt extract. Do you wanna cut the... Uh... Yeah, I mean, you can give this a little soak in some warm water to make it a bit more fluid. Yeah. But this is like the hottest week on record for September. So it's like, <laughs> it's pretty flurried. Yes, yeah. So we're gonna start by pouring this extract in. Ah, oh, yum. I know it's such an amazing part. I love this. It really does remind me of when I started brewing. It reminds me of Horlicks. It reminds me of Maltesers. Um, a little toffee apple vibe to it as well. Yeah, yeah, it's love. the dewiness of it. And the great thing about these uh, these pouches is that you can sort of roll them up a little bit like a... Um, toothpaste tube. Yeah, toothpaste tube to get all of the liquid malt extract out. Now, if you really wanted to, you could then open the bag back up, put some hot water in it to rinse out all the last bits. But to be honest, that can be a bit of a problematic exercise trying to get hot water into the pouch afterwards. So we just advocate for warming the, pa the pouch up a little bit before, and that makes it all really nice and flowable. When you're stirring this, I mean, you want to try and get into the corners as you're adding more water. You want to feel that it's not stuck to the bottom of the bucket. Yeah. You want to kind of get it all so it's dissolved in. So we do have a bucket of cold water to your right. Do you want to start grabbing a couple of jugs worth? Sure. And we're bringing this now up to what, 23 litres? Yes, yeah, because this recipe kit makes 23 litres. Some of them will say, you know, to mix it up to 21 litres or 19. Just make sure you read the instructions for your kit if you're brewing one of these limited edition festival kits. I think the measurements are on your side, so if you yeah, keep an are. eye you on keep it going. for me. Go on. Right, I think that'll probably... How are we looking? Just check against that, because we've got a bit of foam. Touch more, a little touch more. That'll do. Perfect. Nice one. There we go, so we're at... 23 litres now in the fermenter. So now that we've done mixing this up, we don't need to carry on stirring. What we do need to do, however, is have a little bit of a set adjustment to show you the next step in the process, which is going to be transferring this into the chubby. Right, James, so as you said, we've done a little bit of a reset. This almost is like, imagine having it on your kitchen worktop. Yeah, yeah, home. so we've got the tap kind of hanging over the edge. Yep. Could be on your kitchen table, worktop, whatever, right? Yeah, right, first things first, let's open up the chubby. I'm going to drop these parts into the jug because we're going to want those shortly. And I'm going to put a splash of sanitizer in there. Splash of sanitizer in there. And I'm going to get my hand in there. Drop the lid back on. So we start with the dip tube assembly in the keg posts and then like the locking ring on top. Like we did with the bucket, just give it a little swirl around. And this has been thoroughly cleaned before we've started using it as well. They go back into the jug. Now, Ooh. really important step at this point. Empty the sanitizer. Yeah, yeah. We've that, all been there before. That goes into there. Right, so now do you want me to uh, get this transferred out of the fermenter bucket into the chubby, yeah? Yeah, and what I suggest is, you know, there's a bit of a distance between there and there. Hold it, open the tap, gently lower it down yeah. so that it's free-flowing and aerating into the chubby. Right, okay. So lift it up over the tap. I'm going to give the tap a little bit of a squirt with some sanitizer, yeah. just to be doubly sure. Let the excess drip off. So that goes over. Open the tap fully so that it fully flows. You get a straight stream and gently lower your chubby down. We want it all to go inside there because this has all potential of being beer. And what we're doing, like we said here, is that, that drop into the bottom of the chubby, that's getting loads more aeration into the wort um, and it's cold. So that's going to be exactly what we want for the, for the yeast, right? As we get to the last bits, we will then want to maybe tip the bucket or close the tap off and kind of bring them together so they're closer because 
you just want to get those last bits out. Yeah, okay. Well, let's get this transferred in. We'll be back in a moment once we're sort of towards the end. Right, so we're now approaching the end of, uh, of our work transfer, and you can see it's just starting to slow down. Now, just to kind of make sure we don't lose any, we're gonna turn our tap off, and we're gonna just drop the uh, fermenter bucket closer to the chubby again. Thanks, Martin. Always helpful if you've got a third hand. And we're just gonna drain the last bit in like this so that we don't spill any and we're not wasting any either because we wanna get every last drop of our precious work so we get even more beer. Okay, that is pretty much everything out of there now, Martin. We'll turn the tap off, put it over there. Um, could you pass me over the jug with the, uh, the appropriate bits in, just because we're gonna seal this up now so we can have a quick redress and talk you through the next step. So there we are, James, all in the fermenter. Yeah, ready to go. What's our next step then? The final step right now? The yeast. Excellent, so we need to add the yeast into the fermenter. So I'll, uh, I'll take the assembly off. Just... If you're doing this by yourself, it might be handy to have another jug of sanitizer available. Um, but because there's two of us, it's not necessary. Just gonna dump pull it all in. That in. Now this is gonna take sort of 10 to 14 days to ferment fully. It's gonna depend what the temperature's like really. Yeah, I mean it is warm at the moment, which will speed things up, and we're fermenting under pressure, which will speed things up as well. But with all of these sort of beers, you know, you wanna give them enough time to fully round out. What's the very final thing we have to do at this point though? The next step, spundy. So the spundy goes onto the gas post. You know, we're gonna let that go, watch it, the pressure go up. I think we should be sitting there around about eight to 10. Yep. So a little bit of ester. Yeah, we want a little bit of that yeast character coming through, but we don't want it, because we're not doing temperature control, we don't want it to be kind of going all over the place and creating loads of wild off flavors, right? Yeah. One last thing. Now this is clear. So you're gonna put this somewhere dark, hopefully, cover it. You know, or put it in a fridge if you have got temperature control. If you don't have any of those things, grab the box, pop the box on. Yeah, I think that's what we should probably do, right? Yeah. Shroud it in the box and uh, that will sort us out. Where's the box, Martin? Let's say goodnight to that. And we're gonna come back in about five or six days, add the dry hops, and then after that, join us once we're done with fermentation to see how this has turned out. I'm really looking forward to it, Martin. I can't wait to taste it. James, it's been about two weeks. It has, Martin. Yeah. Guess what's under the box? <laughs> well, should we have a look at what's under the box? Yeah, come on, let's see, man. The big reveal. Ready? Three, two, one. Wow. There we go. That's properly golden. I know. So, our beer kit has been sat uh, in the warehouse at ambient temperature for the last couple of weeks, fermenting. It's been a bit warm. It has, and then it's got a bit cooler again, and it's been a bit rainy as well, but not in the warehouse. Um, and then, it's been sat there for a couple of weeks. Like I said, no temperature control, but we did have the spundy on there. Okay. Just keeping that pressure in check. And what did you set that at? Uh, about six PSI. Okay. So six PSI, we depressurized it at one point just to add the dry hops. That was on day five? Yep. Um, and then put the spundy back on, uh, let the pressure build back up, which it, it did naturally. Mm. Um, now it's been, like I said, um, long enough for fermentation to have completed. And the only other thing we did do is just yesterday we put this into one of our fridges here, yeah. uh, just to give it a cold crash, just to draw some of the stuff to the bottom so that we can actually uh, take out some finished beer and I see guess, how we've done. I guess if we had a fridge that we were serving this from and we left it for longer, more would drop out, it'd be yeah, beautiful absolutely. clear. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, you can see how active that fermentation it's been crazy. In there. And it like the, the yeast, like the Krausen, the foam just jumped all the way up to the top pretty quickly. Um, but what's amazing about this is that all of that yeast that has then settled down and dropped to the bottom, you're not gonna be drawing through into your beer because of the way the floating dip tube works in this as well. So it's really, really cool. So now it's on to serving from the chubby. Okay. Okay. Now the way we do that is We've got the what's included in the kit, which is our premium party tap, nice stainless steel party tap, which we're gonna fit onto the beer out. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we've got some CO2 on here um, to just keep our serving pressure where we want it to be, all right? Yeah. And for that, we're gonna be using the mini regulator that's included in the kit. 
and a 16 gram CO2 bulb. Okay, okay. so we're going to depressurize it before we put that on, or no, no need. Yeah, okay. no need. Oh, yeah, because you only had it at like six, didn't you? Well, it's not ridiculously crazy. Yeah, it's not crazy, crazy um, pressurized. So we're just okay. going to screw the CO2 bulb in, yep. and you'll feel, if you've never used one of these before, you'll feel it bite, and that's just before it starts to pierce. It's going to be quick. Yeah, as soon as you feel that bite, you need to get it screwed up nice and tight, all right? Because otherwise, if you're too slow, you dump a load of CO2 over your hand and it'll be nice and cold. Yeah. All right, so our regulator's now set. On the dial on the front, we can turn it up to what we want, which is probably going to be about somewhere between 5 and 10 PSI for serving. Yeah. And then this is going to go on the same post that the spundy was on, so the gas in post, which is the one with the grooves. The one without the dip tube. Yeah, the one with the grooves. So we'll pop that on. Okay. We're now ready to add our beer serving line. So remember, black disconnect goes on the beer line post. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you got that yeah, pointed at me. I know, I was gonna, <laughs> just in case of any fault, Beer point it at a friend. Um, there we go. So that's all now live, ready to serve some beer from. Would you like a glass? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's okay. taste it. There you go. Hold your glass. Do a nice angle for me. You ready? Yeah. Oh, man, it's... There we go. Wow. Now these beer taps, you need to make sure you open them right up. Otherwise you do get quite a lot of head from them. Yeah, because it'll be knocking the gas out of it if you yeah. just slightly pinching it. And there we go, Martin. There yeah. is our uh, festival beer kit, fermented under pressure, in the glass. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful golden colour. Yep. Yes, it's not crystal clear because, like we said, we've only had it in the chiller for a day. Yep. Smells like beer. It does smell like beer. Like subtle honey notes, nice freshness to it, a little bit estery from the yeast because we kept the, uh, the pressure in the fermenter lower, so it does allow the yeast to create yeah. some of the esters that you want in a, an ale like this. Um, Seems yeah. like holding the head nicely. Yeah, head's well. nice, nice creamy white head, fluffy. It's got that kind of uh, appearance and aroma of a car scale, right? Exactly what you would want from a system like this. That's what we wanted to achieve. Yeah. The anyway, pop at home. Should we try it? Cheers. Do you know what? Perfect light carbonation. Like that really nice freshness to it. That is. I think a very good effort at creating a cask style beer at home from a beer kit. I think you can taste almost the difference from that natural carbonation from the pressure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's almost like a finer bubble in yeah. there. There's some nice fruitiness in there. That's good, man. Mate, I could enjoy quite a few pints of this, but I've got to drive home, so I'm not going to. Yeah, you could easily spend a nice warm, sunny Saturday afternoon yeah. smashing your way through that. Yeah, absolutely. And having brewed beer kits before, and as we talked about in the top of the video, brewing them and then serving them from a pressure barrel, this removes so much of the hassle. Yeah. Because you're fermenting in one vessel, you're serving from that vessel. So you don't need to worry about like cleaning your packaging system as well as your fermenter. And because you're using pressure all the way throughout, you've got that natural carbonation, and all you're doing with you know, your regulator is just starting to top things up as and when you get through the, the barrel. I think it's an awesome setup, and really reminiscent of how I started getting into kegging as well. When I first started kegging my beer, I just had a corny keg in the fridge with a similar tap on it, mm. and um, you know, a similar kind of regulator to this. It was actually one of the ones that uses the soda stream bottles. But this is a great way to get yourself into kegging, but also minimising the chance of contamination and off flavours in your beer. I think this is great, you know. You don't have to invest in a keg because you've got this to do the keg's work. But should you want to go somewhere else, you could even probably bottle from this. Yeah, you could. Or you yeah. could transfer from this to a smaller under keg. pressure to a smaller keg. Yeah, if you wanted to say, you know, take five litres of beer away with you, you get a little five litre keg, yeah. transfer the beer from here into that five litre keg yeah. under pressure using the correct disconnects. 
take your little pressure, uh, your little um, regulator with you, you know, and, and your tap that you've already got. Yeah. Perfect little system. And you know, if, if you do expand the system into doing a smaller keg, again, you could then start filtering the beer out of here, brew another beer in here while you're still drinking the other one. Exactly, yeah. Yes, yeah. brilliant. Great idea, James. Very good indeed. Cheers, Cheers mate. We trust this has given you some insight into how you can use this system to actually take the concept of a pressure barrel further into kind of the modern era of home brewing, um, using similar concepts that that system's designed for, but actually using some newer technology, some newer ideas, and embracing some of the most um, interesting parts of home brewing at the moment, which for me is actually fermenting under pressure and the benefits that can have to you and your beer um, without the need for a huge amount of equipment. If you've enjoyed this video and it's piqued your interest in pressure fermentation, check out our playlist with more content on this subject. We've got loads of videos on the topic using these type of fermenters and others to ferment your beer under pressure and seek the advantages that that can have for your beer and your home brewing experience. Now, all that remains for us to say is please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and if you have thoughts and comments, we'd love to hear about them. Drop them below, we'll come back to you. And then finally, you can subscribe to us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the usual channels, and have a great break. Cheers.